Okay, for our next assignment, if we go to assignments, we are going to start putting together the illustration we just did with type and doing layout, some graphic design skills to create our own poster. So let's look at assignment six. You can look at it directly here and you'll see some examples. So the way we will design type is you will take the spot illustration that you just did and you'll start doing what's called type blocking sketches where you're just gonna sketch where you think type should fit around your spot illustration. So the spot illustration was for the last assignment. This one's about designing the type that goes around it, both in black and white and in color, and then putting it into a poster format along with your spot illustration. So type blocking can be really loose. And not only are you deciding what the words will say and how many words they'll be, this one's quite wordy, but also how they should fit around your illustration. Above, below, to the side, on top of, So through this, we're going to learn a lot about type design, making sure it's readable, thinking about poster layout and how multiple elements go together, like image and text. We're trying to keep our posters pretty simple by limiting them to our spot illustration, some type design, and a background. But you can always add more elements if you like. We're also going to use this opportunity to look at finishing techniques in terms of printing, such as halftone patterns and CMYK color separation, which I have some slides for, which you are encouraged to look at and we will talk about in class because it's a complicated issue that I want you to understand for the final exam. But by and large, type design is just that. It's understanding how to make letters and words visually engaging to the, to the viewer and fit what you want. So here we have some independent movie posters by a friend of mine named Akiko Sternberger. And for each poster, she does custom illustrations and custom type. <laughs> and they're really both equally important to getting the personality of that movie across. Another artist, a uh, Shepard Ferry, does the same thing, is known as an illustrator, but often does graphic design and poster design, most famously for his 2008 Obama Hope poster. And without, and he designs the type to go with the image, right? And so this is a mix of his work. Here we have some past student examples again. And we're going to be learning, you know, a new way of using vectors, this time for type design and then putting all the elements together. So how do you start? You start with type blocking. So we already have what our spot illustration is, even if our spot illustration isn't fully colored and finished. So the first thing we want is what's called a type blocking sketch. This can be very loose. And my type blocking sketch is going to be based on the coloring book because the coloring book needs a title. And the president's office has told us what that title should be. So I'm designing that. So I've already done my type blocking sketch. It is this. <laughs> because it's all about how do you bring all the elements together. So this was my type block. This was my type blocking sketch. I knew I was going to have Nico flying here. I knew I was going to have an illustration of the campus here. And I knew I was going to have the title flag that says, Welcome to the Nest here. And then in my initial type blocking sketch, I thought I would have the campus logo, which was also required by the president's office, underneath it. But then when I started putting more refined sketches together, 
I decided that the campus logo should go underneath. Now the campus logo type is already designed. So that's just blocked in already. That's like putting a UPC symbol on the cover of a comic book. It, it takes up a certain amount of space and you just have to work with that. The type I'll be designing as a vector is this. So welcome to the nest. This was modified and sketched from different sources, but now it's my job to turn this into a vector that I can control fully and then uh, color and then use in a full color poster. So I'm gonna load this as my type design. I'll just do a screen grab of this to go with Nico. And that's what I'll put up the canvas. So the goal is, as you guys are finishing up your spot illustrations and reflecting on how to make them an interesting full concept for yourself, you get to pick what type and you get to pick what it looks like around it. You can turn it into a punk rock poster. You can make it subversive. You can make it look very elegant, like it's an invitation to a, a Rococo penthouse party. That's going to be up to you. But it all starts with just a blocking sketch. How do you see your type working with your spot illustration? All right. And then I'm just going to post my refined blocking sketch. Which I will then turn into vector type a vector type file. And depending on how new you are to lettering, maybe you really enjoy type design, you might choose to do a refined sketch as well, though it's not required. Because we'll have the option to fully design the text by hand in Illustrator, but we'll also have the option to modify it from existing typefaces that we'll find through a site called Defont. And I'll show you that next. Whoops, I don't need to do that, let me do this. Okay. So once you have your type blocking sketch, you can start thinking about what kind of typefaces might work well if you don't want to draw them completely from scratch. And for that, we can use a text resource, much like Pixabay is a good resource for, for copy Creative Commons open images, raster images, and vector images. Defont.com has long been a resource for type designers that donate their work and you can see the most recent ones. We have a Squid Game tribute font. Now fonts are actually not the right word for these. These are typefaces, but kind of colloquially, commonly known as fonts. But what a font is, is when you actually bold or italicize or otherwise augment an existing typeface. So bold is a font of Times New Roman, but Times New Roman is a typeface. And I'm not the biggest type nerd, but I've done enough type design to, to know these differences. So let's see. I kind of like, just from the ones that were, were most recently added, I kind of like how cotton butter works. And what I can do on this site, let's see, is simply download it. You can see that it's free for personal use. If I click on that, I can get the, the rights information. And that basically means that it's a, a Creative Commons, but not fully open. So you're allowed to use it, but you're not allowed to profit from it. 
without modification. And we're not going to use any of these typefaces just as they are. We're going to use them as a start and then modify them. But I can download it. And then on my Mac, they're always going to come in as a zip file. And you can feel free to download as many typefaces as you want. This doesn't take administrative privileges. They're just vectors. They're not big. And so then you open it up from your downloads. It will unzip into a folder. And then sometimes you'll get a folder. Sometimes you'll get an OTF file, which is an open type file. Sometimes you'll get a TTF file, but double click on that and it will on a Mac open up what's called the font book, which is like your library on your computer. It will show you what's included. So this just has uppercase and lowercase and you say install font. Once you do that, it will be available for you to use in Photoshop and in Illustrator as well as Microsoft Word and other things. The problem is, how will you know? You can see that I've downloaded a lot of different typefaces for different projects over the years. And designers are kind of proud of themselves for how many typefaces they have. So how can I remember that cotton butter is something I want to use for my project? What I do is I simply move that TTF file into my assignment folder. So at any time, I can download that to the computer I'm working on. Now that's just from their most recent ones. So maybe I want something that's more graffiti. And so you can search for different types, different themes, get different options. If I look for maybe decorative, and it might give you lots of ideas about how far you can push your type. Now, if the type looks like nonsense, if it's just a bunch of symbols, then this is a vector pack, what's called a symbol package, that another term for is dingbats. <laughs> and so that's not going to be readable. You want to modify something readable. But you can also just create the type all on your own. OK. See, what's the last thing I can look up maybe for this? Um, maybe coloring book. Nope, nothing for coloring book. So maybe kid. How many? 243 for kid. Ones that might be kid friendly or look hand-drawn. And mostly you'll see that they're free for personal use with the option to donate to the author. But every once in a while you'll see that they are public domain as well. So it's always good to know the rights. But again, we're going to be modifying these if we use them at all. Yeah, so like this one, it's 100% free. So that's a public domain. I like how this one looks. So it can inspire you. It can even help you with your sketching, which is why I show you Defont first. Now, it's good to put in the text that you want so you can actually make sure that those characters are available. So for instance, I typed in with capitals and lowercase. And so you can see that this type doesn't come with a lowercase, whereas this one does. This one doesn't come with a lowercase. This one does. This one comes with a lowercase. This one comes with a lowercase. This one doesn't. Going all the way to this one, which doesn't actually even come with the custom preview. So sometimes they won't have everything you need. Right? Especially if there's things like ampersands or punctuation marks. <laughs>